Hey everyone, Pat from Aeroflow Performance, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about the Boosted 88s. The 88 series from uh, boosted turbochargers is effectively, it's one of those things where it's really more designed for some slightly larger capacity uh, sort of applications where you're gonna be moving uh, quite a bit of air. Um, so it's definitely not for something that's, you know, we wouldn't recommend it for a two liter or you know, probably even like a two and a half, three liter. We're talking four liter and up realistically uh, on this size due to the size of the turbine wheel. Uh, what is that turbine wheel? Like the name suggests, it's an 88 millimeter turbine wheel. Um, we have two versions uh, in, when it comes to the compressor wheel. So uh, we have the 88, 88, which is 88 millimeter compressor. And then we have the 75, 88, which is the 75 millimeter compressor. The variation there is um, really with the compressor wheel, you're talking uh, potential peak horsepower and response. So a 75 compressor uh, with the same turbine wheel is gonna be much more responsive, but it's gonna have a lower overall ability to move air and compress a larger volume of air. And that's where the 88 millimeter compressor wheel comes in because that's gonna be able to take a larger volume of air, compress that, uh, and then make much higher horsepower. At, yes, a little bit of a trade-off with the response time between the two, because you're physically moving a larger a larger compressor wheel with the same turbine wheel. So on a larger capacity engine though, six litre and up, that's still gonna come on nice and quick. Uh, it's gonna make for even a good street car, but a great race car. Traditionally, the 88s have been a journal bearing uh, core. So uh, this one, for example, is uh, a journal 8888. It has a cast center section uh, with a 360 degree journal bearing race. Uh, this keeps costs down. These are really affordable. If you're building a street car on a reasonable budget or a race car that you want to be nice and simple, uh, this is gonna be uh, a really good option for you. You've got uh, the six plus six, compressor wheel here. So six blades, six primary blades, and then six secondary blades on there. That's designed really to allow for a larger volume of air to get in there and then be compressed. So we can, the CFM of this compressor wheel is much higher. You've got the ported uh, surge slotted front cover um, to keep down any sort of compressor surge that's happening there. You have the large V-banded compressor outlet uh, and then you've got a couple of different options with the turbine housing. So we have the T4 turbine housing here, which is a split pulse in 1.25. We also have a T6, uh, which is a large frame T6 1.32 housing. And then you've got the option of the dual V-band, which is fitted on this one right here, which is a 1.31 in a V-band in and out rear housing. That's also much lighter than perhaps the T6 if you're going for that size. Uh, so that's a great option. It'll allow you to package the turbo a little bit better um, with that smaller footprint that's in there. The biggest change that I would say that we've brought to the 88 uh, range is now this guy here, which is the billet core ball bearing unit. Um, now these have a dual ceramic ball bearing core. As you can see, it is billet as opposed to the cast unit. Uh, so the benefit of this is stability for one. The billet unit is much more stable core so there's less movement um, through temperature changes. Uh, it's also much more effective at dissipating heat. So the, the billet core will uh, cool off uh, a lot quicker than cast which will generally hold on to the heat a bit longer. So in a racing application or even a streetcar application you're going to have a more consistent performance uh, and less expansion and contraction within the within the core unit, within the bearings. Um, so that's going to make it uh, a lot more consistent, uh, a lot more reliable. Uh, the ball bearing 
core versus a journal core will spool a little bit quicker, uh, generally because there's less friction uh, involved. So it's going to uh, come on to boost a lot sooner. Uh, so the 88 millimeter version with the billet core is actually just as responsive as the journal 75 millimeter version. Uh, so that gives you a bit of an idea on where we're at. Um, this guy, for example, is the 7588, where as you can see, that's got the seven plus seven uh, compressor wheel uh, on the 75 millimeter version. Now that's gonna grab that air that's coming in. It's gonna compress it a lot quicker. So that, that's what adds to the responsiveness of a 75 millimeter compressor. The 88 version, is uh, a six plus six the same. So again, we've improved the response with the ball bearing core, but we still have that volume, uh, that CFM that comes with the 88 millimeter uh, compressor wheel. And that's gonna give you that large sort of horsepower uh, potential, which on an 88, 88 is up to 1500 horsepower uh, at the flywheel. So um, a couple of other features that differ on the ball bearing units compared to the journal units is this, uh, this race style cover, uh, which is ported. So it allows much more air to come into the compressor wheel. Uh, it's also got this rounded uh, entry here. So that increases velocity again. The outlet of the, uh, of the compressor is quite unique. So as you can see, we do have the V band uh, flange that's on the end of the compressor out there but there is also the lip here so if you just want to run a slip fit silicon hose for example you can actually just take that off you can cut that off or machine it off whatever you need to do and then just run a slip fit as opposed to a v-band clamp which in a smaller engine bay or a streetcar engine bay can actually take quite a bit of extra space when you're talking about the v-band clamp on top of that and then the bolt that comes off the side of it so it really comes down to your particular application uh, and that's why we've gone with that design so you've got the you've got the option to choose going back to the core on this unit as you can see there are no water ports on the side which you would see on most of our ball bearing uh, style cores so in the smaller frame turbos um, there is water ports the design of this billet core runs a much larger volume of oil so all it requires is a dash six uh, oil feed or a dash four oil feed. And that will allow a great volume of oil to not only lubricate the bearings, but also cool them at the same time. So you don't have to worry about running water lines. You don't have to worry about extra fittings. You don't have to worry about where do you get that feed from? And then where do you return that water uh, as well? So much more simple, uh, much more neat, uh, and just an easier option from that point of view. Uh, if we move again to the turbine, uh, as you can see, this one is fitted with a 125T4 rear housing, just like the journal bearing options. We have uh, the three rear housing options, which is the T4125, a T6132, and then a dual V-band 131. So again, depending on your situation, you can choose which housing is best for you. So technical info is great, uh, but a lot of people really want to know is what's the real world application. Um, so something off the top of my head, for example, we have uh, a customer that purchased an 8888 with the billet core. Um, it has a T6 rear housing. The engine was a 427 cube stroked LS3, so still an alloy block uh, with a stroker kit in it. Uh, relatively low compression um, in regards to the LS3s traditionally. Uh, on 20 PSI, it made um, 1180, I think it was, or 1130 horsepower. Um, that's on 20 pounds of boost. So running E85, uh, 427 cube motor. Uh, that was a manual car. Uh, and it's gone, yeah, it's gone 1180 so far, much more responsive. The vehicle did actually have a larger, similar to our big boys, uh, a 103 turbine combination. Um, it made slightly more horsepower, but it was very lazy being a manual car and a street car. There was nothing happening in first gear. There was nothing happening in second gear. Third gear, it started to go. And then, you know, fourth gear, you're probably going to jail. So sometimes you've got to look at, even though this seems like a very big turbo, it might be appropriate, more appropriate for your application. And we've always spoken about, you know, choosing the right size. So um, that was a ball bearing 8888. Uh, there's plenty of other journal bearing 88s um, out there. 
Similar sort of situation, I've got one with a customer uh, that's a six litre iron block, standard stroke, uh, rods and pistons, very basic combination through a turbo 400. Uh, and they've also gone, I think on 21 pounds of boost, they went uh, 1120. So it's well capable of over a thousand horsepower at the wheels in most applications. Um, and you just basically need to choose where it is you want to be, how responsive you want, what capacity motor you've got, uh, and then you can, uh, you can choose the one that's right for you. As we've spoken about uh, choosing the right turbo and what's right for your application, if you need more advice or perhaps a couple of suggestions or you need to get familiar with our range, don't forget to email us at boosted at aeroflowperformance.com uh, or you can call us uh, in the office. All right guys, so now you know all about the Boosted 88s. You can check them out at your local distributor, a quality retail outlet, or jump online at aeroflowperformance.com.